Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Draw us forth to the table of life. Brothers and sisters, each of us called to walk in your light. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. On this May 29th, 2020, a very special day today. We're here at Mass, celebrating. You're all watching at home, and our... St. Polycarp school children, I'm sure, are zooming in right now and watching the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, especially our eighth grade, who have a very special day today. This Mass intention is for you and uh, and St. Polycarp School. We have Mrs. Flock here, our principal, and Roberta Elliott, the eighth grade teacher and mathematics specialist and everything else. Welcome here today. We have Father Luis and Father Tuan and our seminarian Ivan here to celebrate Mass together as we live stream once more from St. Polycarp Church. Welcome. My brothers and sisters, we are called to be disciples, and we are gathered as the song we just sang, as the St. Polycarp School children know well, gather your people, O Lord, together. And even though we're not here in the pews yet, we're at home gathered in prayer. We're also here acknowledging our sins and our failings, and once more, we're here together preparing ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accuser. He has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed 
was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response, response to Psalm is, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord, the Lord has, has established, established his throne, throne in, in heaven. heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The, the Lord, Lord has, has established, established his throne in heaven. heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put out transgressions from us. The, the Lord, Lord has, has established, established his throne, throne in, heaven. in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength who do his bidding. The, the Lord, Lord has, has established, established his throne, throne in, in heaven. heaven. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen. I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grew old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Like every good priest does, he reads the readings during the week, the gospel, and lets it simmer inside and researches things, goes to the commentaries and researches, as all of you kids in eighth grade most assuredly have done over the years at St. Polycarp Church under the guidance of your teachers and principals. And uh, we'll do a lot more of that. Don't you think, Mrs. Flock and Mrs. Elliott? A lot more research coming in ninth grade, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 14th, 15th, 16th. You keep going. Research. And when you're 100, you research also. And I learned a lot from you kids, for sure. But doing the research for the scriptures today, over the past seven weeks of Easter, we have read most of the book 
of the Acts of the Apostles, the earliest record of the life of the early church, with all of its achievements and trials. Now, as we prepare to celebrate Pentecost, in just two days, this Sunday is Pentecost, we have come near the end of that book and hear about St. Paul, imprisoned in Caesarea. What is interesting is that Scripture does not record what ultimately happened to St. Paul. We must rely on tradition for that. Nor does Scripture record what happened exactly to Simon Peter. We, too, rely on tradition to fill in the gaps. But what we know is that both men suffered martyrdom. They paid the ultimate price for their fidelity to Christ and the gospel. Faithful to the end, they were willing to die for their faith. Now, that's a question I've asked the young people and the older people as well. Are you willing to die for your faith? Are you willing to die for Jesus, for the gospel? Something to think about. In choosing these readings for this final Friday of Easter season, the church invites us not only to reflect on St. Peter and St. Paul's fidelity, their honor and their trust and commitment to Jesus, but to learn from it so that we too might be faithful. So what can we learn from these two giants of the Christian faith? We know that Peter, despite all of his boldness and his fancy words, was the first to deny Jesus at a crucial time when he most needed the support and love of his followers. Remember that in Scripture? We also know that Peter came to regret his denials of Jesus. One phrase used by the Gospels is that Peter tried to follow Jesus from a distance. Do you know any Catholic people that follow Jesus from a distance? Hmm. Not a good idea. Ultimately, that proved impossible, and he, Peter, ended up denying Jesus not once, not twice, but how many times? Three times in one night. Today, in our gospel, those three denials are paralleled by three declarations of love. Here, in words of great mercy and patience, Jesus draws from St. Peter these three declarations, but reminds him that the price of this love will be the glory of martyrdom. St. Paul, on the other hand, began life as a prosecutor. Prosecutor of whom? The church seeking to silence the gospel message and punish its preachers, the people who proclaim the good news and preach about it. Now today, that same Paul is waiting, awaiting transportation to Rome on charges that his preaching of the risen Lord constituted not just an affront to traditional Judaism, but an assault on the imperial system with all its claims to imperial divinity. Fancy words there to saying that Jesus then was not taken seriously and he was mocked. And those who tried to speak on Jesus' behalf were mocked. Some were martyred. Hmm. The final price to be martyred for Jesus. And St. Peter and St. Paul, I have it on good authority, that they were eager to be martyred, to die for Jesus. Now, most of us won't be dying for Jesus, I hope, but if it came to it, would we be eager? I think Jesus would settle for being eager in our faith, trying our best to be like Jesus in our world, trying to be like Jesus in the ninth grade. Is it possible? Yeah. We have people here, a few, that have survived the ninth grade. All of you have survived St. Polycarp School many years, some of you from kindergarten to eighth, and have survived. And I would say rather beautifully. I have been here for almost all of those years with you, and I can attest as an authority of the church that you have done the job of not only surviving, but learning your faith so well that you're ready to take on ninth grade and help others also. 
That's the good news for today. Martyrdom. Yes, St. Paul and St. Peter, all the apostles, and many others throughout church history have died for their faith. And for good reason. They made great strides in helping others become more like Christ. But we need to start by learning our faith. And you guys have a head start because you've been learning your faith since kindergarten. And I know because I spent most of my nine years over in the school visiting and watching you grow. A pleasure that I take with me wherever I go in life, knowing that it can be done. And young people and old people, and not so old people, can change. Oh, sometimes it takes a miracle. But if you realize the gift that Jesus has given us, you know, with our baptism and all the way through, we can be like Christ. We can convert like St. Paul did years ago. Oh, he was smart after his conversion. Not so smart before because he wasn't aware. But once he started learning about Jesus, it was just like he couldn't get enough. And look what happened. He became the most prolific. That's a fancy word. Who knows what that means? Oh, you eighth graders do. He wrote the most in the New Testament. The letter to the Ephesians, the letter to the Corinthians, the letter to the Romans. Many, many, many writings in the New Scripture St. Paul has written joyfully. And mostly writing like dear friends and brothers, very beautifully, very nice, very generous, the way he wrote. And wherever St. Paul went, he learned what they didn't know and took them where they're at. Priests try to do that when they go to different places and are changed to try to understand the people first. You don't go in and try to hit them on the head and say, do this, do that. You walk with them gently and love them properly and become one like them. Today's gospel simply tells us, as Jesus said to his apostles, and he's saying to the eighth grade, feed my lambs. Feed yourself first with the word of God and with his body and blood soon, someday, together in this church or wherever you go when we get through this sickness that the world is in, but it, we'll, we'll get through that. Feed yourself with the word of God and do your best to understand it, to live it, and to have the courage, like Peter and Paul, to give it away to others with joy and love. God bless you. Please stand. With confidence in our God who hears us, let us bring our needs before him. For the church as the body of Christ here on earth, may the Lord grant us patience for one another, bearing with one another in love with humble and gentle hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world, national, and local leaders, may the God who gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning grant them just and prudent decision-making. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may the hope of the resurrection fill them with courage and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here and at home, may the grace of God embolden and strengthen us in our lives of disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the glory of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for special attention of 
the uh, this mass for repose of his soul of Rugge Lazarus, but uh, John the Baptist and Joseph and Peter, Mary, Maria. For their eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more voc vocations to the priesthood and religious life and lay ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the violence that is right now going on in Minneapolis, Minnesota, that there can be peace and justice soon, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our and prayer. for our mighty eighth graders whose mass we're intending for them today and their families and for their graduation, their drive-through graduation at 11.30 in our St. Polycarp School parking lot, which I will be at, and Mrs. Falk and Mrs. Mrs. Elliott, uh, honoring them and praying for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord yeah, pray. Almighty and eternal God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be, Blessed God, be God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for, for the praise and the glory of his name, name for our, our good, 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right this is and right just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Please be, kneel, please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his youth throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our our daily bread, and and forgive us our our trespasses. trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us, us and, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For kingdom the power, the glory, glory are yours now forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with with your your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you You take take away the sin of the world, have have mercy on us. Lamb Lamb of God, you take take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, my roof. but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. healed. Together with you at home, please pray with me the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love, I love you, you above all things, things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since, Since I, cannot I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, come at least spiritually into my heart. heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and, and unite, unite myself, myself wholly to you. you. Never permit me to be separated, separated from, from you. you. Amen. Amen. Please stand. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us 
may bring us everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is Friday, and it is customary, as we've been doing for the past couple of years, and certainly during these past several weeks during this coronavirus, is to have adoration for an hour from now until 1030. And also, since it's still the month of May, praying the rosary within adoration, and it's Friday, so we'll be praying the, the sorrowful mysteries uh, throughout the uh, hour. So I want to thank you for joining us today, and special greetings and congratulations to our eighth grade class who will be graduating in an hour, in two hours, I think, 11.30, in our parking lot over here. Kind of a private affair. Uh, pray for them. This is unusual uh, times uh, that all our graduates around the world, especially in, in this uh, country, uh, have to do it creatively. But they are still loved and, and, and uh, being cared for and prayed for, and no less of an achievement, I can assure you, but something to talk about in years to come. Imagine Mrs. Elliott, Mrs. Flock, a drive through graduation. Did you do that when you were younger? No. Maybe another drive through kind of thing? I don't know. I used to drive through fast food. That's the only thing that I remember. But this is a very special day uh, for our eighth grade uh, graduates. So we love you and uh, we'll pray for you and can't wait to see you from a distance, uh, a, a nice distance, and give you something very special on behalf of St. Pauli Carp School. Let us pray the St. Michael prayer together. St. Michael, Michael the archangel, archangel, defend us in the battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May, May God, God rebuke, rebuke him, him, we humbly pray. pray. And, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Have a great day.